Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're doing something to add some horsepower to Old Westie. Now, there's a lot of ways people say you can add horsepower to these vans. You can do ratio rockers, performance exhaust, all those things. We have all those. Well, maybe not the performance exhaust anymore. We did ditch the Rocky Mountain Westie exhaust and go back to a Go Westie style exhaust, but we do have Rocky Jennings 2.2 liter engine. It's got ratio rockers, it's ported, it's polished, it's got a different cam. And today, we're gonna do something else to increase that horsepower. We're gonna install a Bosch Decode ECU. And this ECU by itself does nothing. In fact, this was my spare ECU I had laying around. And I thought, well, let me look and see what I've got. And it's happened to be this famous Decode ECU. What's different about this ECU? Well, it has a removable chip socket that the earlier ECUs, the Triumph Adlers did not have, even the earlier Bosch's. These came in late model vans, typically 90 or 91, and this chipset is removable. What's about that is we're going to replace it with this Tectonics chip made for Vanigans. Now, Tectonics is not that far away from where we live. It's about 45 minutes out in Sheridan, Oregon. We've been supporting them for a long time since I've been building GTIs and Jettas back in the 90s. Oh, good times. We had some sweet GTIs. Nancy and I used to cruise around in those. Man, we were freaking cool. But it's been a while since we bought some from them. So today we're going to show you how to take your ECU out, take the Bosch Decode ECU apart, put this chip in it, and we're going to put it back together and see what the performance is like. Now, before you go out and buy yourself a chip, even if you have a Decode ECU, please make sure your van's running really well because this won't solve any of those problems. In fact, it might make it more difficult to trace down problems if you don't know where you're at. So make sure it's in good tune, like normal. You don't have any sensor issues. Your O2 sensor is working well. Your idle control system is working well because the Decode ECU, if you don't have a later model idle control system, may change the idle a little bit for you. Um, what we found when we ran that Bosch as a backup is we didn't get the when it first starts up, it doesn't excite the alternators quick and you have to rev the, on the gas pedal a little bit. I believe that has to do with the later model idle control being a little bit different. But we have a solution for that too as well. So if you have a lazy alternator, it won't excite right away. We're going to get it excited. Your stock Vanagon ECU is under your bench seat right there behind that cover. We're going to take out our, some of our spare parts and our tools and we'll access that cover right there. So now those parts are out of the way. You can see here's the protective cover for the ECU. And right in there, you can see our stock ECU. So there's a screw here and a screw there. And this is our S-Bar heater cover. There's actually a screw underneath. I just keep that one loose because it just it's a slot that drops back on. So we'll take these two off. This whole cover will come off with the ECU attached. So this now just kind of pops up. And there's our stock ECU. Right here you pop out and it tips out. Here's our Digivent ECU. This one's made by Triumph Adler. We're gonna remove this ECU from this protective cover. There's a screw here, a screw right here, and a screw right here. We'll take that out. We'll compare it to the Bosch unit. Here are the two units side by side. Again, here's our stock OEM 87 Vanagon ECU. And here's the Bosch decode that we had as a spare. You can see they're identical in size, shape, the mounting points are the same, the attachments for the clips are all the same. The real only difference is this one has a removable chip for our Tectonics performance chip. What you're gonna need is your Bosch Decode ECU, your Tectonics chip, Phillips screwdriver, something to pry the chip out with, and we use these pliers to kind of pry up some of the little button heads that are in there to take this apart. So first thing we do is take our screwdriver, we take out these four screws on the front of the unit.
Next we take these three screws out from the back. After we remove these four screws and these three screws should come apart. Now there may be a little resistance. There's a rubber seal back here that may be stuck a little bit, but this one comes right off. Next we take these little clips out here. They're kind of pressed in, heaps this down. Take a little screw, or little pliers here. Pop them out. Our ECU is inside of here. Next, we have this screw and this screw, and then compress these little pieces where the clips just were, and this folds open like this. Now there's one, two, three, four, five little tiny slotted screws with these little nuts on the back. It's a pretty tiny slotted screw, so a thin blade on your slotted. And there is our chip. Notice on the chip there's a little notch right in the end. On the tectonics one, there's also a little notch right there. Make sure they go in the same way. Take a small screwdriver, gently under socket, and let's kind of push up both sides. I don't need to rush at this point. No reason to ruin anything. There we go. Put the tectonics one with the groove on the same way. Line up all the little feet. Make sure they're in all the little holes before you push it in. There you go. You just added some horsepower to your Vanagon. If you notice our ECU has some white goop here. I don't. I can't imagine that's factory, but it didn't look like anyone had been into this ECU before because the screws were all marked. I guess they could have remarked them. I'm not really sure. There was a vibration issue here. It was fixed. The ECU ran fine for a long time, so I'm going to assume it's still good. So now we'll put everything back together, put the covers back on, everything back together, and then we'll put the case on and we'll put it in the van and see how it runs. Got the ECU all back together. We're going to plug it in the van and see how it starts. First fire up with the chipped ECU. Well, fires up, that's good. See, it doesn't, of course, fix the alternator issue, but I have a fix for that, so. It's running. Now let's go fix that lazy alternator. This is what we're gonna use to fix that alternator, not initiating right away. Now, Go Westy calls this a lazy alternator fix, but I'm not going to call Westy's alternator lazy. That little guy works hard to keep us all charged up. So we're going to see what we can do to get him excited earlier. What do is we have to get inside of here, open that box, and there's a blue wire connected and a black wire connected. We're going to separate those two and put this in between. Start by popping this open. I'm going to take the cover off just so it's easier for me to see here. Okay. So in here, your mess of wires, there's a blue that I connected, and here are the two blacks that are connected. We're going to take, put these in between. So pull our blues apart and our blacks apart. We go black to black. There. And then black to black here. On this side, blue goes to blue, blue goes to blue, like that. Okay, let's see it now. Look at that. What an excited alternator we're charging at. 
14.5. Happy with that. Well, it drives. <laughs> it seems to drive pretty well so far. It's idled really well. It's idling a little actually higher than it did before. I don't know if that's just because it's still cold. So we're going to do a full warm up cycle and then see where the idle sits. We have to adjust that a little bit. As you kind of saw before, the idle circuits are a little different on the decodes versus the older ones, but we'll get that sorted out. So let's get it warmed up a bit and see how she rips. So we have everything buttoned back up. ECU is all back where it needs to be. We've had this for about a thousand miles or so. Our Canada trip and Vancouver Island was in there. Some local trips. It's been a good upgrade. I think the five or six horsepower that Tectonic claims is probably accurate. I really can't feel it, I don't think, but from 2000 to 5000 RPMs, it does feel a little bit smoother. Now, it could just be placebo effect, but it's been a good upgrade for us. We're gonna keep it in there. We'll put a link in the description where you can get that from Tectonics Tuning. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts on this upgrade, let us know in the comments below. We'll get those addressed. Thanks a lot.